on today's show, Forza 3 Connect and DLC, PlayShare and Top Sim Cars. This show is sponsored by Sim Raceway. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Jessica Lopez. This is Sean Cole. Hi, hi. This is our 73rd episode of Inside Sim Racing, and we're back to regular scheduled programming here. Yeah, that's right. We're done with E3 and just back to doing what we do. Last four episodes were E3 special reports, one of which, actually the third one, Sean interviewed EA That's discussing right. Need for Speed, and uh -huh. we've gotten some comments out there about Sean looking a little hyped up. <laughs> and I noticed as well, so I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed. It's okay, everybody. I am back from energy dr drink rehab, I guess it was. Are you sure? sure. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I'm a little hoppy still. <laughs> but no, uh, I, I got a little carried away, I guess. And I'm partially to blame because I discovered the giving out of free pomegranate blueberry energy drinks. And, and... They were tasty, and I just kept... <laughs> Downing them? Yes, you did. <laughs> but he's back from energy drink rehab, like he said, and we're back to our regular scheduled programming, like I said. <laughs> so here you go, top simulation cars of all time. It's our 24th installment. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It's been a while since we've done them, so I mean, I'm excited about getting back to it. And this segment is sponsored by SimRaceway.com. The home of online racing. All right, back for Top Sim Cars. Seems like forever, man. I know. It's, it has been forever. We've been doing it forever, and it's, now it seems like forever since we haven't <laughs> done it. Uh, so actually, a whole month, pretty yep. much the whole month of June, we missed it. So we're back. Top Sim Cars, top simulated cars of all time. A couple cool cars today. Yeah, starting with the Audi R15 TDI <laughs> uh, by Forza 3, turn 10. Right. And uh, this is a Le Mans prototype. And Le Mans winning prototype. It is now. <laughs> it, yeah, this is the this is the successor to the Audi R10, which is I think the most winningest car. And I probably, if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I, I think it's the most it's the winning one of the winningest cars at Le Mans. I don't think I've ever actually seen a race where that car didn't win. If it was in, I've just never seen it on the podium. Now, well, in the R5 in the uh, 2009 Le Mans debut of the R15. Really? Peugeot won that race. Ah. Uh, so, but previously, Audi had dominated. Mm -hmm. And so they came back with the R15, took a year, and then, actually, Peugeot was looking good this year, but Audi ended up taking it in the end. So, yeah. so Audi, this is the Le Mans winning car from this year. And uh, another difference between the two cars, R10 was a V12. This is now a V10. So it's a little lighter car. They've moved the, the motor a little bit because of it. And that's pretty much it. You know, yeah. one of the things that I tripped out about this car was the, the ground clearance. It looks like it's a four by. The thing's got like this much rake in the rear end and it's like, well, they're just channeling a lot of air under it, I guess. And I was gonna hammer turn 10 for the model. <laughs> Cause I thought, man, they actually put that much ground clearance on it? You know what, sure enough, they do. And I mean, the R10 was like glued to the ground. No, the R10 actually had a little bit, a little bit further back those models were glued to the ground. But um, yeah, they started, it looks like the R10, they slowly started getting it up, and now the R15 is like a four by four, pretty much. Um, but yeah, they did a great mo job on this model. You it's know, gorgeous. It, it, it's really well done. Yeah. Sean's gonna roll up scores here for us. So in physics, it gets a 15 and a half out of 20. Sounds, 13 out of 15. Models, nine and a quarter out of 10. Cockpit, nine out of 10. Fun factor, eight and a half out of 10. Immersive, seven and a quarter out of 10. Force feedback, seven and a quarter out of 10. Damage, four out of five. Skins, four out of five. And the default set, 4.5 out of five, giving it a total of 82.3. Which isn't bad. No, no, it puts it 36th on the list. Uh, I mean, Our growing list. It is, and I mean, 36 is a high number, but again, these are the best of the best. So, yep. I mean, that's not too bad. Yeah, and I think where it suffered is physics. Mm -hmm. You know, 15, 15 and a half out of 20, we yeah. gave it. Uh, damage too uh, was you know some of that's kind of exposed. We rated this really high when we when we originally did this uh, this title, and four out of five is good. I mean, because yeah. you got the transmission damage and all that. But you know, a lot of it I noticed. I mean, I hammered it into the wall, and a lot of it's just surface damage. Yep. Just, you know, scratches and stuff like that. But yeah. Still well done. 
Yeah. Uh, overall, it's it's a very nice car, and and you know, it actually would make for some great multiplayer racing, I would imagine. I agree. I agree. I, especially if we could get a bigger grid out there. Uh, yep. But it is a beautiful car. I mean, I think some of the, the better parts of it is the modeling and the interior. The interior is a little simple, but gorgeous. Yep. So there you have it, the Audi R15 by Microsoft Turn 10 uh, for Forza 3. Now, next up, we have the Osmoders. We're going to talk about this and <laughs> have this up on the screen here in a minute. Uh, Osmoders Bathurst Legends 1972, and we're going to be uh, doing, there's three cars in that mod, but we picked the GTHO Phase 3 Falcon. A Ford? We picked a Ford. Yeah, and there was actually a hole in there <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a Dodge, but we picked the Ford. So, the reason I picked this one is it was just at R Factor Central. Actually, it has been for a little while. <laughs> you mean because it popped up? <laughs> no, I've actually been watching it for a little while. It's out actually version 1.3. And I looked at the, the voting, and it's got like 456 out of 500 on, on the R Factor Central scale. So, right. Check, if you're interested in checking it out, which we, at this point, might as well just tell you, I highly recommend checking it out because uh, it's a cool mod. I mean, even just what they've done with the showroom and stuff, these guys have gone into pretty good detail with it. I've learned something about me. I like old cars, and I like driving old cars that don't handle very well but have a ton of power. I think it's a freaking boat, man. <laughs> it, it is fun. It is a ton of fun, and uh, that's for sure. So that this is a great, great way to put it. This one falls right into my uh, boat, like you said. Boat. Yeah, and then there was the three cars, like we mentioned. There's the Tirana, which is the Holden, and then there was the Dodge Charger, uh, and then this one, the Ford Falcon. Uh, this is called the GTHO Phase Three, and I guess this was a series in in '72, and these cars mainly ran like endurance races. This was right. not short sprint races in these cars in in the uh, at our factor central you can see they they wrote about you know five to seven hour uh endurance races right. this is aussie i mean you said aus motors this is australia this is the guys at bathurst this is a crazy group of race car guys so i'm not surprised they were doing this in, in my kind of race in, car guys i yeah, like it <laughs> yeah i agree completely this thing drives like a boat and a tank and it it and a race car all combined. Yeah. This one had the most horsepower. This had a V8. The other two had six cylinders. Um, no brakes. <laughs> the thing, you know what I, I was talking to Sean, it reminded me of driving my, my old friend's parents' early 70s Impala. <laughs> And the first time I drove it, it had a bench seat in it. I didn't, I wasn't strapped in, <laughs> didn't have my seat belt on. And the thing swayed so much that I slid and was holding onto the wheel. I almost let, had to let go of the wheel and crash the car, but I just held on enough to, to save it from wrecking. <laughs> but um, these things drive like that. Yeah, they definitely do. And and for me, that's a lot of fun when it comes to driving. Yep, I agree. So why don't you... Uh... You know, the other thing I gotta tell you, when it comes to the older cars, I'm sorry, these are the cars that that's make okay. me grab my stick shift and clutch. And that all didn't of a sudden... sound right. <laughs> what? Make you grab your stick shift? Ooh, that didn't sound right. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat and start that all over. Okay. One thing about the old cars for me is it immediately makes me want to use the, the five speed, well, in this case, a four speed and the clutch and do some heel toe. It's like the timing, the way the revs move through the car, just the way the car handles, it just, it it's begging for it versus new things which use paddle shifters and auto clutches. Yeah, paddle shifting you know? this thing just didn't seem right. You got yeah. to shift with the... Uh with the, the clutch and the and the stick. I actually naturally found myself just using the clutch just because I wasn't even thinking about no. it and was just like, oh, this thing's gotta be yeah. driven like that. And to me, that kind of hits home. What are we doing? We're sim racing, sim driving, and if, and if it's making you wanna drive it like a car, it's, it's being a true sim. Yep. So, scores. Scores, okay, this one did well. 18 and a half out of 20 in physics, 13 and a half out of 15 in sound, nine out of 10 in models, eight and three quarter out of 10 in cockpit, Nine and a half out of ten in fun factor, nine and a quarter out of ten in immersive, nine out of ten in force feedback, four out of five in damage, five out of five in skins, and five out of five in default set, giving it a total of ninety-one and a half, and that puts it fifth on the list. Yeah, it did really well. It I, did. And you know, one of the only places that that I heard it was I gave it a couple points off for sound because it didn't have a. a I wanted to hear a gear chunk clunk, you know, right. in the shifter, and 
I didn't check. I meant to check the sound file, maybe saw, see, check if something was mapped wrong, but that was like the only thing missing. I mean, this thing was <laughs> a blast to drive. I can imagine running all three cars, even though the other two had sixes and less horsepower. They were lighter and better yeah. brakes. Yeah. So I would imagine it makes for some really cool you yeah. know, multi class or multi car in a single class race. I would like to set up a race with this one just to see the, the next class. And I'm going to tell you something about this one also. I just wanted to keep driving. Uh, yep. I, I was all alone. I didn't even go in multiplayer on this one. I was all alone at Bathurst, and I could have done hundreds of laps and just still had a grin on my face. It's that much fun. Yeah, you know what I, I told Sean yesterday, you know, as far as fun factor goes? If I can laugh when I'm driving a car like that, and not laugh <laughs> at it, but laugh because I'm having so much fun, and it's yeah. just, it's really doing what I expect it to do, and and just have fun driving it like that. I mean, it, 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 fun factor goes through the roof for me, and so does immersive and yep. you know, and everything that goes with it. Yep, so, well Os Motors, kick-ass job. You guys <laughs> yeah. did a great job. You know, congrats on on this mod, and and you yeah. guys have some races going on, man. I'd love to join you. Definitely, let us know. Yep. So that's gonna do it. Top simulation cars. We're up to 48 cars now. Getting close. Yep. Gonna have top 50 and a cutoff there. So. <laughs> Next episode, I think we'll do two more to round up that top 50. Yeah, that'll do it. Coming out of Top Sim Cars, that was our 47th and 48th car. Getting to 50 pretty quickly. Getting to 50 pretty quickly. <laughs> I like that. Once we reach the top or the 50th Top Sim car, we're going to cap the list off there, and other cars will be They're kicked either, out. Yeah, or not even make the list at all. That's right, uh, but we sad. will still have the segment, and that'll just kind of make it a little bit more competitive, so we're excited about that. Yep. And I actually drove the top sim car earlier today. That's right, the Audi R15, which won Le Mans this year, which is a pretty big deal. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I sat in this rig, which is the Play Chair by Play Factory. It's a very sleek and nice design, and I'm going to tell all of you a little bit more about it. Based in Poland, Play Factory has created these high-quality gaming chairs and accessories. Said to be designed without compromise for the most demanding player, Play Gaming Products blends classic and modern design styles with optimum performance. The Play product lineup gives you a variety of colors and patterns to choose from. The chair supports racing wheels, gaming laptops, keyboards, gaming boards, and gaming mice. The cost options for the play chair in Europe are 249 euro for the base chair plus an additional 49 euros to adapt it to any racing wheel on the market. For the pedal plate, 49 euros and an additional 39 euros for the shifter mount. Total is 386 euros, 85 euro for shipping, bringing the grand total to 471 euros at your door. The same setup sent to the United States comes to $742. So you mentioned price. I mean, it's definitely a little on the expensive side. Personally, I would pick the adapter plate that I want. I'd probably not get the shifter. I probably would skip the, the pedal plate as well. And that actually brings the thing all the way down to $441 all the way to my door. In Europe, you're looking at 350 euros. So, I mean, a little more reasonable. Yeah, definitely. And it is, you know, it's a, it's a nice chair. So, I mean, for that kind of money at that point, we're pretty good. And you mentioned this adapter here. And why would you need this? Um, is the chair, isn't the chair compatible with different, all different sorts of wheels? You know, I think you could probably clamp like anything on, but they're actually, this is drilled out and intended for the G27 or the G25. Uh, this is the 911 version. They have an Xbox version. So getting the adapter is going to give you a much stronger fit than just kind of clamping a wheel on. So they did a good job there. That's something I love too. Not a lot of companies are making something different for each wheel company. All right, so moving forward into the stability of the play chair. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very stable. I enjoyed sitting in it. It had a great back support here. Where it ends kind of ends right perfectly in your mid-back. So yeah. that made it very comfortable. Yeah. And this design that we're looking at here is the Baron design, kind of mm -hmm. like Darren, but Baron. <laughs> and um, it reminds me of the signature logo or stripes that Gucci has. Gucci. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Um, it does come in a lot of colors, though. So, like you said, this is the Baron model. You've got the Shelby model, which is blue and white, which is typical. All sorts of color schemes all at their website. Very classy looking. It reminds me of something that would be in a businessman's office or on a display. A dental office. A dental <laughs> office. It does kind of remind me of a barber chair. 
Yeah, that's the one. You Very had, comfortable. You had brought up construction or stability, and I want to talk about the stability a lot uh, on this, but the, the chair itself is very stable and does not move at all. The upper apparatus, which I'm going to swing up and swing down out of my way real quick, which is sort of the way you get in and out of the play chair, there is a little bit of wiggle to it. Um, and at first, I thought it was going to be too much wiggle for me to even like. But funny enough, when I was driving, I didn't notice it as much as I thought I would. So they did pretty well there. The, the overall construction is amazing. I mean, like you said, this leather is beautiful. The chrome finish is beautiful. It's a very solid unit. So, so real nice on that department. So why don't we see what Darren has to say about the play chair? He's right over there, and we're going to go ahead and find out his opinion. <laughs> Okay, so my take on the play chair, by the way, that's spelled P-L-E-I, made by Play Factory, as Jessica and Sean told you. Um, I gotta admit, first I was skeptical, uh, just because of the ergonomics, you know, the, the shape uh, and design. But I gotta say, out of all the stuff that we've had, the build quality and the materials that they've used are probably the best. I mean, this is, you know, as far as I know, most of it's hand built. This doesn't look like it's assembly line at all, um, and it's heavy duty. Uh, you know, as far as it, again against anything else we've had on the show, the craftsmanship is really nice. Now, as far as it being raceable, um, for what I was just doing, console racing, you know, this this piece has a little bit of wobble, and you really don't notice it when you're, you know, when you're racing like this. Now, if I was doing some serious hardcore, you know, PC sim racing, I don't think I'd want to be using this chair. But for any other type of gaming, it's really comfortable. You know, the back gives you good support, the backrest. Uh, you know, we mentioned it being, you know, hand stitched with this leather. It's a nice chair, you know, and I could, I could see if I had a bachelor pad, you know, having it off to the side and, and using it as a gaming chair or as uh, a racing chair. A little pricey. You know, $700 for the whole package shipped. I'm with Sean on the not needing the, the pedal plate. You know, for the Fanatic, uh, the 911 Turbo S like we're using here, you don't need any kind of shifter. I guess I could just use the chopsticks if I wanted to run the six feet. Uh, but I, I didn't need the, uh, the plate here, you know, for 39 euro or whatever it's going for. So again, like I mentioned, a little pricey, but uh, you know, if you're looking for something that doesn't look like a rig, uh, you know, they've got a ton of different colors. I'd highly recommend it. I'd even, you know, on my rating, we're going to give our ratings here. I might go a point higher than what we're going to give at the end. But uh, for the most part, I agree with the, the, our final scores. And it's a cool rig. And, and, like, again, material, you know, workmanship, craftsmanship is really nice. Um, just in the U.S., a little pricey. You know, once it gets through customs and all that, I would imagine it's, you know, it's going to be a lot. So there's my take on it. Back to Sean and Jessica. It's now time to put the play chair on our rev scale, which is our 10 point rating system. Mm -hmm. And we came, we all came up with an agreement on the scores for the play chair. Yeah, well we agreed, but we kind of split it too. If you live in America, we're only giving it a seven. It costs a lot of money to get this over from Europe. So that brings the price up high. If you're in Europe, it's actually really reasonable shipping and we give it an eight. Final thoughts on the play chair? It's more of a gaming chair rather than a racing rig. And right. if you're looking to do some hardcore racing, you, I would opt for something like we have back here, a major rig setup. Yeah, something that actually holds the pedals and the wheel and everything. And right. personally, to me, this seems like something that would be more in an office environment. Mm -hmm. Someone like Tony Garner or Dave Kemmer over at iRacing would have something like this in their sure. office. And when they want to do some racing on the side, it's, it's stylish and it's easy to pull up and it looks professional to me. Yeah. Good observations. You know, my opinion on it is the same as you. It's definitely more of a gaming chair. In fact, we kind of showed you how it tilts up. This actually comes off as well. And you could put this away. And at this point, this really is just a chair. So if you want to play another type of game that didn't require a wheel, you're good to go there. Uh, a couple of things we didn't show. I did mention not getting them, and this is one of my complaints about the, the, the rig as well. This is their answer for the pedals. This is the pedal plate. It adds some weight and has some sticky feet, and this is supposed to stop the pedal. Well, 
for me, it drives up the price and it doesn't do it effectively. And that's one of the reasons I want to rig is to hold the pedals as well. Mm -hmm. So that kind of had this not as good as it could be for me as well. When we initially tried out the plate chair, we didn't have that plate. And I remember the pedals shifting and moving. Mm -hmm. And for that being 49 euros, right? I mean, that's quite pricey over here in the US. I, I agree. It is pricey and it's one of the things that needs to be addressed. I would like that to be fixed to the chair and that would solve that problem. Another thing that we didn't show, but I do want to show it just so people can do it. This is the G25 or G27 shifter mount, which does work very well. It mounts onto the side right here, mm -hmm. holds it in a reasonable position. It's a little low and a little to the side for me. So again, that's why I recommend it to save your money and not necessarily get that. Um, the other thing is anybody who's looking at this, this is different. It's unique. It's not a stand you pull up to the couch. It's like you said, it's not a full rig that you sit down in and have all your pieces there. It's sort of in its own little bracket or category. And for anybody out there looking at it, I think they're gonna love it just looking at it right away because it fits their need. Otherwise, they're probably considering something more of a racing rig. You can check these out at playfactory.com. We're gonna head to a quick commercial break and when we return, Forza 3. For all of your sim racing news and reviews, check out racesimcentral.com. Feel your sim racing experience come to life with the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 by Gatammer. To enhance your F1 2010 experience, you can get $10 off a Gamer 2 now by going to InsideSimRacing.tv and clicking on the Butt Kicker banner to take advantage of this offer. Live the game and feel the music with a Butt Kicker Gamer 2 for $119.99, only at InsideSimRacing.tv. Does not include shipping and handling. Offer ends October 31st, 2010. Get in here. Get in here with Sim Gear. Now only $179 exclusively at InsideSimRacing.tv. Time for our top story of the day, which is sponsored by RaceSimCentral.com, home of your news and forums since the year 2000. Mm -hmm. That's and a long time. Yes, it is a long time. It's like before Al Gore the decade. invented the internet, I think. <laughs> and today we're looking at Forza 3. And just a little side note, it is pronounced Forza not Forza, just right. like pizza is pronounced pizza, not pizza. And I will say it right from now on, Forza. And just so we don't get a lot of slack out there, we have confirmed its pronunciation <laughs> and it is Forza. And we're going to be taking a look at its past mm -hmm. from when it was released in late fall last year. That's right. And it's present today and future. That's right. You know, it came out, they've done a lot of updating or downloadable content to it. And that takes us to today. And today you still have a really strong community behind it. And that leads me to a whole other topic, which is their community. And Che Chow, who a long time, he's been one of the community leaders at Forza or Microsoft. He's actually leaving that group, staying at Microsoft, but moving on to a whole other project. So I'm sure we'll hear a lot from him. And we future. wish him all the luck in his Absolutely. future endeavors. Definitely. So here we go. Forza 3, past, present, and future in a segment done by Sean and Darren. The original game Forza hit stores back in May 2005. Upon launch, it had over 200 cars and a nice selection of tracks. Two years later, Forza 2 hit the shelves and expanded greatly on the already acclaimed title. Car customization, both visual and performance, improved damage and physics, and of course, more cars and tracks. This time, nearing 350 cars. Also came the pattern of downloadable content for the game after its release. Forza 3 came to us a little more than two years later. This time the game came with interior views, much improved physics and handling, and more cars than you could imagine. Combine the large selection of cars and plenty of tracks, and Turn 10 had completed one of the greatest driving sims for a console ever. It's hard to put the number on actual sales, but to give you an idea of the success of the franchise, Forza 2 actually sold twice as many copies as the original game. And even more impressive is that Forza 3 has already sold twice as many copies as Forza 2. Now that is a growth curve. Downloadable content has become one of the regular occurrences for Forza drivers over time. Turn 10 has managed to release car packs or tracks at nearly a monthly rate since its launch. We have seen the free track packs of Sidewinder Proving Grounds and the Benchmark High Speed Ring added to the game. There have also been countless car packs adding cars to Forza. Since its launch, the game has grown to over 484 cars. Some of the latest car packs have been the Summer Car Pack, or the Exotic Car Pack featuring cars like the Gumpert, or the Spiker, or the Mossler and Radical. 
the Jalopnik pack, or the Hot Holidays pack, including the Ferrari 599XX or the Nissan GTR spec. Each pack has had a small cost associated and contains 10 cars. As you can see, Turn 10 has not only made a fine sim, but continued to expand upon it. And to really get an idea of what is in store for the future, we are able to have Dan Grenewalt, the director of Forza himself, give us a demonstration of the future of Forza. So Forza Motorsport is now at its five year anniversary this last month. We've had three releases in five years. They've all been an average of 90 plus rated, and they've doubled in sales each time. And that's really cool, and we're excited for the business of that. But the truth is, our team's all about innovation. And it's all about that passion and love that people have for cars. So doing simulation, doing racing, having 500 cars, you know, for us, that's a means to an end to get people excited about cars. So a little bit about the innovation. We have the green line we introduced. We have the livery editor with painting that you can see out there. We have the auction house. We have the storefront. We have community features that have really taken racing to a new place. But racing's kind of a defined genre. You know, it's been around for 20, 25 years. We've got controllers. We've got wheels. For us, Connect allowed us to really innovate the space in a brand new way. We could start delivering on that vision of bringing new people into the genre with brand new experiences, and we could rethink the genre in general. So the two experiences we brought here, one is a racing experience, but it's racing in a new way. It's rethought. While not getting rid of the sim side, we've added new layers to make it just more approachable to a new audience. And the other aspect is a car experience, where you bring the showroom into your living room. And that's where we're most excited. We think that's where the real revolution is and where we're going to get a broad new group of people. And actually, already today, tonight, people have just been going kind of crazy for it. So we're really excited to show you that. So, you know, a lot has been added. A lot of things have happened to Forza since it's coming out. Yeah. And, you know, I have to be honest, when we first reviewed Forza, we weren't getting into the multiplayer aspect much. I mean, it was You really and I just raced each other, just it, mainly drag racing and some other, you know, yeah. basic track racing. And it was done pre-release. And things like the fact that it was even on the console, it convinced me it was a full-blown sim. Um, I'm not trying to take away from Forza here, but I think I might have even scored it a little higher than I would have given a little bit more time. Yep. Uh, it's a fantastic driving game, uh, and there are elements of it that make it very sim, but ultimately it it's not. A, yeah, it's not a true simulation. No. You know, and neither is, is Gran Turismo 5. Um, or anything on the console for that matter. You know, none of these titles offer, you know, safety cars and, you know, just the ability to have full open world, not open world, but like in iRacing or R Factor, Net Car Pro, Richard Burns Rally. I mean, they're true simulations. You start yeah. in the garage in a lot of these, these titles and yeah. have to, you know, actually weave your way through the, you know, the garage area, out <laughs> the pits. You know, iRacing is not like that. You just start in your pit stall, but still, I mean, it's... But even then, you have to observe pit lane speed. You have to come out at the right, the, the blend line. Uh, There's no AI, artificial intelligence, controlling your car in, in the PC simulations. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there, there's modes, like I know, in, in like GTR and stuff like that, where you can set it like that, but the true PC simulations, the simulations, that's the way they are. And when we think full simulations, we're emulating real life. That's hitting, qualifying, uh, starting in the right grid position, uh, starting with the, the car in neutral and actually rolling backward if you're on a hill. So anyway, um, Forza is a great driving game. Gran Turismo is also a great driving game, yep. um, but but definitely not in that same league. Yep. So anyway, I just I thought that was only fair for us to, to talk about that. However, you know, as mentioned before, tons of downloadable content. I mean. Tons of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, back to the, the simulation thing really quick as far as like the controls go. Honestly, I don't think these titles would sell the millions that they're selling if they were true PC simulations. You know, yeah. like we, we just covered WRC in the last show. And a lot of people are really up in arms because it's not the next Richard Burns rally. Right, right. You know what? The next Richard Burns rally is not going to sell a million copies, guys. No. And that's <laughs> what these guys are going for. They want to make money, yeah. but they also want to make as true to life simulation as you can. But you also got to take into, you know, into consideration that more than 50% of the people playing the titles on the console are playing with a game pad. 
Yep, yep. I mean, the, you know, they haven't sold, like, for instance, Forza 3, you can't even get the Microsoft wheel anymore. Well, you can, but they don't even manufacture it anymore. Right. The other option is the Turbo S, as far as force feedback goes, and they only sold, you know, up to 10,000 units. That's yeah. how many they made or so. So, I mean, yeah. that's a very small percentage of the millions of people that own Forza 3. And if I make my game or sim only playable on a wheel and people the the uh, controller pad can't play it very well, you're just not going to you're not going to appeal to as big an audience. Yep. I mean, it's not a matter of how many sell you. Your, your audience will be so handicapped by that. So go ahead. Let's go back to what okay. we were talking about. Sorry. I so, to finish that part up. Uh, and I'm really glad you brought that up, by the way. Uh, back to the DLC. We counted like 83, 84 cars have come out since the game. And of course, most of these you have to pay for. There have been car packs that cost you 400 points. There have been a few free ones like the Hyundai VIP pack. Tons of cars. I mean, 83, 84 cars, that's more than Some games Sims. even have. <laughs> yeah, some games don't even come with, with that many cars. So it, it's really cool to see that they've continued to update it and yeah. are continuing to update it. Mm -hmm. uh, lots more cars coming out. So that, that's yeah. really cool. And tracks too, right. Nürburgring. Uh, we actually, I ended up getting a boxed <laughs> copy from, from Turn 10 and had the downloadable content that came with what? The Proving Grounds and the Sidewinder track. Right, right. And then a couple of the car packs as and, well. And a couple of the cars, exactly. Like the Legends, or, or was it the Legends car? Yeah, Legends with the old Sean's cars. Sean's more really of an expert cool. on these packs. Unfortunately, I don't have the ones we're talking about right now. And I do have them. <laughs> I'm the only one that has them. But, um, so they've come out with a ton of stuff since launch, which is really cool. And, and you know, besides that, their whole community. Mm -hmm. I mean, of all the consoles, I think Turn 10 are probably the most involved yeah. on the console titles than any others. Yeah, they're holding competitions all the time. We report about one in uh, at Race Sim Central. Uh, and then also, the, they allow the community to post their own competition. So I actually saw one the other day where there was an entry, uh, Microsoft dollars, of course, or points, and all of that entry was put into the purse. So all of a sudden, you had a giant amount of money at stake for everybody involved in that, that type of racing. You have a lot of leagues also that are posting in their forum saying, come race with us. You know, and besides the racing, they've got the, you know, the whole storefront area where you can you know, buy and sell cars, right. and paint schemes, and uh, tunes, and all sorts, when I say tunes, you know, setups, not music. <laughs> um, but it, it's really cool that they've really incorporated that aspect, and, and even though Forza, I know Forza 2 had it too, but I mean, they've really expanded on it, and, yeah. and really stuck with it. You yeah. know, a lot of times, the, you know, these titles come out on a console, they may have one patch, and then you don't hear from them again. They're already right. working on the next version. Exactly. So it's great to see that they continue to update this. Yeah, and if you're a fan, it just keeps you really, really involved, and, that, and that's a good thing for any sim. Yeah, let's touch on the races. This is a race that we actually put together with some of our viewers, um, and we just had posted on the forum. We had over 16 people that, that joined, yeah. and we had a blast. Yeah, you know, back, <laughs> absolutely. You know, back to the physics, you know, this isn't a sim, and it, it doesn't, there's a lot of missing sim elements, but it still provides some great racing, and, and you know, eight is definitely a, a limitation that, that yeah. hurts Forza, mm -hmm. um, and Gran Turismo is really gonna kick its ass, <laughs> uh, you know, as far as that goes, double the amount of drivers um, hopefully the connections can handle that and everything, but um, that's going to be really cool to see. And, and yeah. there's just, you know, it can provide some great racing. Is it a true simulation? No, but damn close. You know, I, I refer to these as track day sims. Yeah. You know, and, and, well and a track day, you don't have caution flags. Well, maybe you do. You have corner mm -hmm. workers, but you don't have, you know, a full race weekend that you're doing. So it's it's more of a track day, but right. it's kind of in between. So, so that kind of catches us up to date. Uh, but Forza, says, well, you know, they're still rolling things out. Another pack's coming out as we speak. Uh, we also were invited to a party. This is kind of going back to E3 a little bit, and this is the Forza party, where they had a few things that were looking towards the future of the franchise. And they were just kind of teasers, and they weren't even all the way worked out. But we did get to play with Connect, right. with Forza. Um, Which was a trip. You know, it's, it, <laughs> Tell you know, it. I mean, it's a trip I, for, for real. And I've seen some comments out there about it, and people are like, oh, that's how can they go this route? And listen, guys, they're, you know, in talking to Dan Greenewalt, uh, you know, this isn't, they're not trying to make this the future of Forza. This is just an option that will be in, I don't know if they're going to call it Forza 2011 or Forza 4, but it's a party game. Yeah. It was a great party game. Yep. This is not a sim. You know, it was full arcade. I mean, it was, 
you know, <laughs> within 30 seconds, pass as many cars as you could. Yeah. Give you an idea, you don't use your feet, so there is no, no gas or brake. It's all being done for you through driving aids. Yep. Uh, and and then there's the whole like showroom thing that they had going on, which was which was pretty cool. This is a debatable thing that uh, the, the the value of something. I loved it, but then we all immediately recognize, well, how long are we going to do it though, or how many cars? I mean, there are 485 cars now, so are we going to do all of them? Are all of them even available? I don't know. Well, I think that was a specifically modeled car for the yeah. Connect. I don't think that, that <laughs> that's the type of detail we're seeing in these cars right now. Right. Um, but. You know, cool. It was a cool deal. You know, maybe they'll offer some kind of head tracking with that or or something. But you know, that's a that, you know, 150 bucks. I think I'm not sure if that's the price, but it's like at least 100 bucks for the Connect peripheral. So right. I don't know if that's going to be worth getting. But it, it was cool. Yeah. I also want to mention that party we went to it was a lot of fun. I'd like to thank Turn 10 for inviting us. Mm -hmm. um, got to meet a few people from within the community and mm -hmm. see some cool stuff. Got I had a guy that was painting up a logo from scratch. I mean, the painting in 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 Forza is just <laughs> The amount of work that goes into the stuff that these guys do. And the I had layers. a hard time just putting three stripes on my car and making them look symmetrical. Yeah, this guy was making this full skull thing with, you know, with a scarf on it, and it was really cool. And this was just a matter of a couple hours, and this was very elaborate design. Yeah. The other thing that was really cool about that party is we got to go into Mr. Cartoons, you know, uh, Sean and Jessica <laughs> mentioned it coming in, into his, like, lair which we saw some really cool one-off lowriders and, and got to meet one of the guys that, that kind of like is like a caretaker of, the, of his shop. Yeah. Uh, we got to thank Alan Hartman because this, this is a party going on and somehow he kind of got a handful of people out of this party who were the only ones taken into this very, very closed door area. Yeah, and actually when we were going in, the, this caretaker guy we were talking about was like, hey, who are you guys? And we said, well, Alan Hartman sent us in. He's like, all right, come on. <laughs> um, but we got to see some really cool stuff. We were hanging out with... Thomas, my, our good friend, Thomas Jackermeyer, <laughs> probably said that wrong, sorry, Thomas, and Ian Bushing was there with us from PSR right? TV, so we had a lot of fun that night, and I'd like to thank the, the guys from Forza again, Turn 10. Yeah. Uh, so. And this is cool, because this is, we're sim racers, we're passionate. This is a guy who is an artist of vehicles, real cars, or tattoos also, and hearing his passion for what they do really translates well to what the Forza guys do for them, or for what we do for our show. Yep. So that's pretty much going to do it for this this pizza on Forza. Do we? I don't think we missed anything, do we? No, I mean, I think we can keep looking even more to the future. We've heard rumors of Forza 4. I don't know if that's the name they're going to throw around, but I mean, like somewhere, somewhere, there's a calendar date probably even. Uh, I've heard it, but I've heard it's coming. Yeah, I would imagine late in, in 2011 for the Christmas season. Uh, and our shootout's going to be coming, GT5, the full version, versus Forza 3, year in the making. We've been waiting <laughs> for this one forever. That's going to do it. Yeah, Forza 3, if you haven't, check it out. So there's a cool look into the future of Forza 3, and during E3, when the guys got to go to Mr. Cartoon's well, it was Forza's Shop. party it was that we Forza's didn't know. Party. It was his lair. All I know is at night we're driving to East L.A., going to a very scary <laughs> location for the Forza party. And then we walk Forza. in. Forza. Forza party. We walk in. There's a Ferrari. There's a, a Striker. It was at Spiker. Mr. Spiker. He can't talk today. Another it was at Mr. Cartoon's um, tattoo shop. He looks scary. <laughs> he's a nice guy. <laughs> Don't be scared. He's 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 cool. <laughs> kind of gangster. Yeah, I, yeah. I met him at, over at the Magic Convention in Vegas, which is not actually magic. It's a fashion industry convention, mm -hmm. and he was cool people. So good look into the future at Forza Three, and I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our subscribers, that especially the ones that have recently subscribed and help us reach our ten thousand mile mark. Yay. We've been trying to do that for a while, so. <laughs> Now we want to get to 20, so naturally I'm going to go ahead and ask everyone out there to subscribe if you have not. Yeah, friends, neighbors, mother. Whoever, whoever sim races. It'd be <laughs> nice to have some more girl sim racers watching the show. Yeah, get your mom sim racing. We got a ton of uh, cockpits or sim rigs coming up on the future episodes of Inside Sim Racing. Right. Yeah, are we going to change the name of the show? Inside Sim Rigs, maybe? Maybe just temporarily. <laughs> we got the Steady Play, the GT Omega, the Ren Sport, the Hot Seat. We got tons of rigs coming up. So make sure you tune in and make sure you subscribe if you have it. That's going to wrap up today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Checker flag is out, and so are we.